You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. You've got all your Charger gear on because you're feeling fresh as hell. Well, you guys better enjoy it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown! Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> well, hello there, folks. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldog, sitting with my buddy, Kev Huggin' Duggan. Oh, yes. Victory time, baby. <laughs> it's victory brisket Monday, baby. <laughs> Finally get to wear well, this shirt. I'm so happy. Yes. Oh, feels so good. But let's not forget Kyle, the coach Duggan. So what are our new superstitions, boys? I got a lot. Oh, get ready for this one. <laughs> so we won. So we got to have some new ones. <laughs> Kevin so I, does. <laughs> I wore my hat that usually is on the wall. It's signed by Nick Hardwick. Offensive line Pulled played great. No sacks. So did that. Obviously okay. continuing that. Um, I have another victory brisket shirt that I wore underneath my jersey. I didn't Preemptive. wait for the victory. I manifested the victory. He willed See, that's what it Pablo, into existence. Pablo did that too. Remember on our our Zoom hangout that I was yeah, for a that's, that's where I got the idea. He I was, he was gonna. I was scared of the shirt. No longer. This is now no a longer. staple that I wear underneath Under my shirt. jersey. And uh, yeah, and we have to do a live stream every game. Apparently, so, apparently uh, yes. Yeah, Kevin and I we were like, should we do a live stream? Should we try this live stream thing? I don't know. Um, and we did, and we had a minor hiccup with uh, the NFL, but uh, <laughs> ah, hey, hiccups are. We got whatever. through it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we turned it off, and uh, Just the rest of the time. Put that baby on your chest, burp it, and those hiccups go right away. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So we we got to hang out with some of our Patreon members, which was a lot of fun. We got to chat with each other all throughout. We were making each other laugh. You guys were making us laugh just as That's much a, as we were making you really laugh. Fun. Uh, we had some great moments. Colin, Chris Collins, <laughs> Phil, Phil Collins. Collins. He's not I Phil wish, Collins from now on. <laughs> that's the only thing I wish we recorded was you just straight calling him like, come on, Phil. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Phil. Phil Collinsworth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. Um, all right, folks. Well, it's Victory Monday. There's so much to talk about. We've got a lot lined up for you. Uh, we've got a Ask Bolt fam, pretty chunky, and uh, we've got a special brisket abroads segment this is the prime time edition Briskets normally we, wow. these are just the away games but they were at home they were wearing their sick ass costumes and i can't wait to i have no idea what to expect with this i don't so know I'm what's i'm excited i'm <laughs> so, sure it's gonna be rad we get to see some thunder alley and all of our friends so it'll be oh, that's gonna be fun oh i can't wait let's get to it this what are we doing here let's, let's get go. to it yeah what are we doing um all right let's talk a little bit about the game here first, just before we get deep, too deep into it. Now that we've had a day to kind of let it sit, how are we feeling? Anything that we're thinking about going like, you know what? There was this thing, or you know what? There was that. Anything jumping to you guys, or are you just happy to be a victory Monday? <laughs> <laughs> Kev's smile says it all. <laughs> it just feels good, man. It feels like I forgot that I don't like to go and watch, you know, YouTube and all the people talking shit about us. And this morning was like, oh, great. They Chargers look like they're back, you know, mm -hmm. and that's that's refreshing, you know, to hear other people talk positively of your team. So that was really nice this morning. And yes. uh, yeah, just in general, they at the game, I went back and watched it again. Amazing first half. Like, hopefully yeah. we can start doing that offensively in the second half a little more. Um, but the defense looked great. I, I can't believe that this run defense is what it is like now compared to what it was last year. Yeah. Just a totally different team. Yeah. We were giving up like 200 yards a game yeah. on the ground yeah. every game. And it was just like, what are we doing? I mean, yeah, I guess we're stopping some of the big plays, but man, they're just running all over us. Yeah. It, it was really nice to see us like make a undrafted division two quarterback look like an undrafted division two quarterback, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. it felt, it feels like in the past, like everyone's like, Oh, you did what you're supposed to do to you beat a bad bears team. Okay. But in the past that we don't win by multiple scores against the bad bears team, we mm -hmm. squeak out a victory at the end. And then it's, Oh my God, how did we not, how did we not beat them by more? I feel like right. we were just the better team last night yeah. and it was very, relaxing and i had no fear that they were going to get back into that game even in the second half where we kind of sputtered on offense a little bit only put up six points but it was the defense the defense at least 
against a bad offense, they did their job. They looked right. good. I think Alohi back, like we're back at full strength. Joey looks healthy. Um, so yeah, I think, I, I don't know. Everything about it was kind of exciting. It wasn't like a, oh, wow, this one thing was huge. Felt like the whole team just played a little bit more connected football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. I mean, even Justin Herbert, man, those those last two losses, it was just like something's not right with Herbert. I right. mean, we all know his finger was an issue, and it was we, we were trying to pinpoint because this was just not the Justin that we're used to seeing. And yesterday, I mean, what what were the stats that he put up? Like twenty four completions and like he had fifteen almost, straight. He had fifteen, he was 15 straight for to start fifteen the game, to start the game, which wow. is crazy. Like that's what that first half was. Yeah, and if he's cooking like that, there's no stopping him. Wow. Yeah. I'm so, just and, and I was just the one other thing I will say about the game is like you know Donald Parham. I know we talked a little bit about him in the instant mm-hmm. reaction. Man, he had a hell of a game. Like what yeah, he was he able to do, you know, after the catch, and that was just exciting. And you know, the fact that he got targeted more, I curious to see him get a little bit more of the share than Gerald. You know what I mean? Like I I, I like what he's doing, especially you know catching the ball and running. Just as measurables, just from how tall and lanky he is. Yeah. And Stiff with the strength behind it, like he's not a wispy dude. Like it's not like you're no. gonna blow on him and he falls over. Like he's still right. extremely strong. So it's like, yeah, man, let's get let's more of this, please. Yeah, um, <laughs> Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. And ugh, I'm just I'm so happy that they that Quentin Johnston had just that one catch. Like obviously he, I think he was targeted like six times or something like that, or had six catches. I can't recall, but there was that one catch where he caught it and shedded like three tackles yeah. before they finally took him down. It was just like, okay, that's what we have to right. look forward to with that's, this guy. That's TCU Quinton. That's what we drafted yeah. him for. Those were all of his highlights. That's what he does best. So yeah, he's capable of doing it. Let's just get him the ball. Please. <laughs> yeah, let's just make him part of that. those, those checks. Like Keenan, Josh, Quinton, please. Yeah, 100%. loved it. That was that was awesome. So um, looking around on uh, Twitter... Uh, and our good friend, friend of the podcast, Daniel Popper. <laughs> I don't know about that. We do like we him. try to get him on for a bolt insight or something like that at some point. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not after we made those jokes about him. Not a I'm sure weeks he did here. I'm sure he would agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> he got um, bond over it. Yeah, that guy kind of hates it. it sucks. Yeah, if he can't laugh at the situation, yeah. I mean, come on. Um, there was a new article from The Athletic, uh, how a defensive meeting spearheaded Chargers response versus the Bears. Let's celebrate by Daniel Popper. Daniel Popper, not normally one to quote unquote celebrate, uh, more so just gives the straight facts. This is what it is, blah, blah, blah. But uh, according to players during a defensive meeting early in the week, Ansley challenged his unit by showing clips of great NFL defenses of years past, most notably the 2018 Chicago Bears, celebrating together as a team. We ain't having enough fun, Ansley said in the meeting. According to cornerback Jasir Taylor, uh, the reaction from players in the meeting was unanimous. Everybody was up for it, said quarterback uh, Sante Samuel Jr. The Chargers formed a celebration committee this week that (laughs) included players from every position group, Taylor said. Uh, The committee planned out three coordinated (laughs) routines to celebrate as a team after turnovers. And according to safety, Derwin James Jr., the defense ran out of celebrations in Sunday night's 30 to 13 thrashing of the Bears. Uh, Credit DA, James said of Ansley, he came in the meeting early in the week. He said, let's add this. Let's get back to having fun. It was a fucking big lift for our defense. That's awesome. Sometimes just little things, you know, helps. What's you're playing, you're still playing a kid's game. Like if you just go to it, that's why I was, I was a little bit torn up by um, Austin Eckler's comments last week. Where I just got to do my job. doesn't matter how I feel. I just need to go play, get my numbers. It's like, I get the sentiment, but if that really is how you're seeing it, you're not going to be great. Like, like Derek Ansley saying, you, you have to play with emotion and you have to have excitement and you have to have fun to right. be really, really good at this game and play together as a team. You can be successfully in, successful individual, like an individual sport, swimming, track. Like, I just got to get my job done. I got to get these reps in. It's That's all. I just got to get in and get out. Wh- whatever you want to do. In a team game like football, like this is the stuff you have to have. Like last year when we heard about Cleo Mack taking the defense out to dinners. Like that's not just showing up and getting your numbers. That's let's 
Let's have fun together and be a unit and play for each other. So that's awesome. It's cool that Derek Ansley has the kind of pull to be like, hey, I'm the DC. This is what I want to do with the defense. And Coach Taylor's like, okay, I agree. Let's go do it. Yep. All work and no play makes Austin a dull boy. <laughs> um, oh, great timing for that, too. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween, yes. Um, yeah, no, I think that's fantastic, especially if you saw the celebration uh, of the defense. They, like, <laughs> the conga lined, basically. They did a choo-choo yes. train. <laughs> Come on, ride the train. <laughs> ride it. Well, I they're going to have to do a little bit more work on this on the off day because they need to have at least five or six ready to go. <laughs> Gonna Are we going to see like some this. like Robin Hood men in tights type celebrations? I You remember the basketball in the beginning where they all do like yes. the, the kick line and all that's that? That's what I'm saying. That's Are what we, we going to see a kick line here at some yeah, point? That's what we need. <laughs> um, well, it was fantastic to see and great to see that everybody loves it. Yeah. I mean, you could apply this just to your job. Like if you are not having fun at your job and you're just like, I just got to go in, I got to do my job and then I got to go home. You are not going to be the number one. You're not going to be the best at your job. And number two, that's a sad life to live. So yeah. if you can go in and have fun and yeah. like these guys are, they're going to want to come into work again. They're going to want to come right. in and do yeah. the best like, that oh, they we can. Got, we have our committee meeting today. Yeah. Oh, we, we got to go talk about our celebration. I got to bring <laughs> some ideas today. All right, guys, yeah. I set up a PowerPoint. Here's a couple of celebrations <laughs> we could do. Like, yeah, that, it's going to make it more fun and more engaging. And I think that's fantastic that Derek Hansley was able to integrate that with the entire defense. Um, looking more over at Twitter, we've got Eric Smith who tweeted out chargers outside linebacker, Joey Bosa posted an 82.7 defensive grade last night per PFF. That's his best mark of the season and top grade since week two of 2022. And wow. Brandon Staley said, feels like he has his legs and his gas tank full. Let's just keep it full. Like yeah. don't skip those pit stops, Joey, like every time. <laughs> <laughs> that yellow flag or whatever it is in NASCAR, you go, you hit the pits. All right. You need yeah. to get that, get yeah. that gas, change those tires. <laughs> don't, don't try to be a hero. All right. <laughs> don't pull a lightning McQueen. Yeah, and don't wait for the, the warning lights to come on, on yeah. your car, you know, take it in for an oil change. If you got to do it, whatever you got to do, but that's awesome. That, I mean, that we're seeing a Joey that's now coming into his game week eight of the of the season too this isn't you would expect this like week one to him for him to be like all right i'm ready to go he hasn't played a game now he's week eight in and we've still got so much more football to play that yeah if he can keep that gas tank full who knows what we can see from joey bosa very that was exciting. pretty sweet it was sweet seeing him throw up the tonga the tule Boom, celebration yeah. i love that I that love was that. fun man it's just like that's camaraderie. All that right stuff there. makes it makes it feel like a team. They're yes. having fun. It's not just, okay, I got my sack. Now I'm going to robot back to the sideline because I did my job. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, Tyreek Hill, that video that he's you a sent psychopath. Us, dude. That guy's insane. <laughs> <laughs> That's Antonio Brown. Give it six games. He's not making it to the end of the year. <laughs> he's lost his mind. Yeah, he was like, lost. he like scored, sprinted to the, the bench, and then he's like, like that, like you look like the Joker. It's creepy, dude. <laughs> Weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. Glad that's that kind of energy isn't on this team. Scary. Um, let's see. Ryan DePaul tweeted out quarterbacks with the most three plus touchdowns, zero interception games in their first four years. Patrick Mahomes is 15. Justin Herbert, 12, has 10 more games in year four. And Dan Marino has 11. So Justin Herbert's already blown out. Dan Marino's bust, first though, four dude. years. I know. Total bust. Trade him. Get rid of him. Yeah. How dare you? Let's tank for whatever quarterbacks we can draft next year. That was the crazy, like, the I get the recency bias and stuff, but like, when totally. people were saying that stuff about Come Justin, on. I was like, what are we? That's honestly, insane. Like, are you, are, is this like, are you being sarcastic? Like, I'm not sure how to read this. Um, no, you sound stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You sound real stupid. I don't if I you, don't mean any disrespect, but it sounds like you just got so off the stupid, stupid bus. Yeah. <laughs> stop, stop, stop talking. Stopped at the stupid stop bank talking. and picked up some stupid money. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet. Shush. Shush. Um, all right. Well, let's look at some uh, post-game quotes here. Here's Staley on Joey Bosa. Staley said, you saw a healthy Joey Bosa last night. He's been practicing well, and I thought he rushed well. Uh, he had one sack, but in terms of his effect on the quarterback and his pass rush win percentage, by our count, he had an outstanding game. I thought probably his best game of the season. Well, PFF would agree. Uh, and he's healthy. The way our defense is set up, they're the ones that have the 
angles and the green light to be aggressive. I thought you saw on the fourth and one stop last night, he gets the tight end one-on-one, and Joey is going to win that 10 out of 10 times. You're not just paying guys to rush the passer. You're paying them to be complete players. You pay them to make all the plays. Those guys take a lot of pride in doing that. Yeah, it was cool seeing him and Khalil back on the same side in some of those pass rushes yeah. as well. Like we got excited about having Thule with Khalil or Thule with Joey, but Joey and Khalil together, that's that's it's dangerous. That's some real it's scary. meat over there. Yeah. yeah but seriously. you gotta have confidence in Thule to be able to play that opposite side and be able to hold his own. So mm-hmm. um that's a cool little evolution that you're starting to see on the defensive side. Yeah. Um, and then Staley on uh, Lohi Gilman's return said, uh, I thought Lowe, great name, I thought Lowe played well in the game. I thought he communicated well. He had the big pass breakup on the fourth down that led to the interception. Uh, just had good respect for the deep part of the field. Just commanded well back there. I thought that him, Derwin, and Dean uh, did a good job getting us into the right stuff, and it was good to have him back. Yeah, Dean Marlowe seems like a bit of a revolution for our defensive backfield. Like having that second guy that can be in there and allow Derwin to get down closer to the ball. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Well, I mean, when he's we. He's a great when, tackler, too. I really like He's yeah. a really good tackler. Big time. I mean, when we found out that Nasir Adderley was going to be like, I'm retiring, we're like, okay, well, it's a Lohi Gilman spot to, to come in and play. And without uh, a Lohi or Derwin in some of these games, it's been Dean that's had to come and step up in some of those plays. And. Uh, granted, we haven't gotten necessarily the wins, but we've certainly seen some plays from this guy that's made us go like, okay, all right, we see you, Dean Marlowe. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's awesome to, to hear about that. And then uh, Staley on the team's performance said, it was our most complete week of practice too. I thought that, uh, that that was what we were in search of, is to feel that complete game where you're feeding off each other and your level is high the whole way. There are going to be some things that we need to improve on for sure, It wasn't like it was the perfect performance, but I liked the level of play. I thought the level of play, the style of play, was much more of what we were capable of. Agreed. Yeah, those are the standards that he has set for this team. Is it's not it's not just stats. It's what's the level of play? What, like he said, you know, yeah, Joey Bosa only got one sack, but his pressure on the quarterback was disruptive. It was a problem, and and. Everybody was very concerned about uh, Bajan being one of those quarterbacks to come in and make us look silly and make us go like, why are we still fans of this team when we can't stop this undrafted rookie quarterback? And that was not the case with with this team last night. The guys came, they performed, and it was the level of play that we know this team is capable of. And if they can improve on that and be consistent with it, then who knows what this team could possibly do. Um, and what you could possibly do is going over to our Patreon, nice. patreon.com slash charge nice. chat. Uh, check out all the fun stuff we've got going on over there, folks. That's where you can catch our live stream if we do it again in the future. And I think Monday we night. might. Yeah. Um, so definitely go check out patreon.com slash charge chat. And if you don't want to go over there, it's totally fine. You can go on over to our regular website, charge chat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we got over there. T-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other Charger Chatteteers in the member section and ask questions in Ask Bolt Fam. So go check out ChargerChat.com. If you ever thought, why the heck is my wireless bill so dang high, then let me tell you about Mint Mobile, who we're partnering with for today's episode. You might already know Mint Mobile if you've seen those funny ads from Ryan Reynolds, who's also an owner, but let me quickly tell you about how awesome their service is. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network. They keep costs low because they sell direct to you online. They cut out all the retail stores and the salespeople and things like that. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? It's a good question. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code if you're interested in the best value in wireless. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning-fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. Mint also offers a modern family plan that lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as two lines. Now, I've used Mint Mobile, and I gotta say, everything that they've talked about as far as switching over being extremely easy is 100% true. It was a super easy process, and then once I was switched over, I honestly didn't notice a difference in my performance. You know, all the apps that I typically used, like uh, Twitter and YouTube and things like that, ran exactly the same as they normally did on my previous carrier. 
Like I said, switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to their digital eSIM cards, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your own home. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, that's totally fine. Mint Mobile will ship you a new SIM card for free. It only takes about 15 minutes to switch, and Mint Mobile has great customer service if you need help. And right now, as a special limited time offer, you can get their unlimited plan, which is normally $30 a month, for just $15 a month. That's a 50% savings off their already super low price. It only takes 15 minutes to pay as low as $15 a month for your phone plan. It really is that simple. Use our link mintmobile.com slash charge a chat to get started or click the link down in the description or scan our QR code. It really helps out the channel. And if you've already made the switch to Mint Mobile, let us know down in the comments. We'd love to hear about your experience with them. Thank you, Mint Mobile, for being our partner for this episode. Hey, guys, we got to take a second to talk about something here at the Charger Chat Podcast that we're really excited about, and that's Bolt's Bids. Bolt's Bids is available through the official Chargers website and the official Chargers app. On the app, scroll about halfway down until you see the Bolt's Bids banner. Say that five times fast, and you're going to find all kinds of Chargers memorabilia. Team-issued jerseys, helmets, uh, game-used balls, player-worn gear, uh, what else is there? Player signed gear and much, much more from both current and former players. So make sure to check out Bolt's bids either on the app or the website to see all the amazing pieces they have that's updated regularly. And you're probably going to want to go there right now because Bolt's bids has consistent giveaways. You just need to download the official Chargers app, scroll about halfway down until you see the Bolt's Bids banner, then click Filters and select Giveaways. And if you don't want to use the app, even though that's the easiest and most preferred method, you can also click the link in our description or go to chargers.com slash Bolt's Bids and then click Filter, Offer Type, and choose Raffle, then hit Apply. Now, you will want to make sure your account info is filled out and updated with your name, email address, card info, and mailing address because the winner will be auto-selected and notified via the email address they have on your account if you win. And the reason you need your card info in there is because you will have to pay for shipping, but that's an absolute steal for these giveaways. So make sure you go to the app or the link down in the description for your chance to enter. So be sure to go to Bolt's Bids for your Chargers memorabilia and bolt up. All right, gang, we tease this, this extra bit of brisketology, <laughs> is, if you will. Uh, it's the home primetime edition of brisket not so a bronze Ooh. one two one two three well there's no place they wouldn't try to hang out with justin and his squad get ready to hear their positive thoughts it's time for brisket a So Kevin had asked if we would do a, a brisket of broads for this prime. I hope you can hear us. He asked if we could do. <laughs> he asked if we could sugar water. <laughs> Twelve points if you can get that reference. Kevin asked if we would do a special brisket of broad segment for the prime time game. So I was like, I don't, I don't think we can do it, Kevin. But then game day and we're like well, let's just film stuff just in case just see what happens we will just see because what if we win then we definitely want to do a brisket of broads <laughs> we definitely want we definitely want <laughs> this is going to be an abridged brisket of broads it's going to be a brisket abridged <clears throat> but we have to be kind of quiet because my brother's downstairs hopefully he's uh, not going to get mad so this is what it was like getting to the stadium. Arizona Bolt Club? <laughs> this is Karen. Hi. She's famous. <laughs> we're going there. We know where we're going. We don't need nobody to tell us. I can't tell anybody where we park because then they'll know. Ooh, it's I a know. secret. <laughs> hey, where did the players park? We still haven't figured that out yet. Do you know that? I do not know. Mm, nor does well, she. Well, you know what? We should mention it's October 29th. That makes this the Halloween game. And of course, we were Chargers. This is what the tailgate was like. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
is what winning by 17 points is like. <laughs> And this is what it's like trying to catch your Uber after the game that you won by 17 points. Nice. Say something to our friend who's Dutch. Our friend Sana. Uh, de Groete uit Los Angeles. Yes! There's other Dutch Charger fans! Oh, great. <laughs> great. Nice to meet you guys! Karen was our Uber. The best friggin' Uber that exists. Thank you for waiting for us, Karen. Yeah. Sorry we took so long to get to you. Sorry we stopped to, to talk to all these different Dutch people. <laughs> we just get really excited when we meet the Dutch. Yeah. I was yeah. so happy they wore white pants tonight. We could have totally snuck on the field. They would have thought we were part of the team. Yeah, we could have snuck on the field like that manatee. <laughs> yeah, <I> totally did. <laughs> And they were putting on like their little hats. This is what drunk Canadians are like. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's to take his. Maybe it's to take his head. No, you got it. Wait, wait. Where's the front of your head? Well done. Where's your head? Oh, I gotta go ahead and this one. No, you won't fit in that hole. There you go. Good boy. That's good. See, it goes that way. Stop. <laughs> Wearing also. See him at the Jets. <laughs> so yeah, is that pretty good? Oh, perfect. Brisket. Brats. That was so. It was very well done. That was so yeah, good. You did so good. a surprise. We Thank you. Yeah, Honestly, we I got that text in the morning. I was like, oh my God, they did it. And then I was like, this is going to be so awesome. Yeah. And it was. It was. It really was. You didn't let us down. Not at all. But <laughs> we don't know what that guy said because we don't speak freaky deaky Dutch. We don't. <laughs> no, okay. We don't. Yeah, let us know. What else? Oh, something, something, something in Los Angeles. Yeah. Hopefully it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's go back. All right. Ladies. All right, let's go back to talking. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was so much fun. I, you, you look like you had just the time of your life. That that was the one that was the one disappointment was watching the game and not seeing the brisket broads, knowing they were there in their costumes. I don't know what you did to piss off the manatee, is... but he'd never put the camera on you. So yeah, hey guys, you, we talked about new superstitions. The broads might have to wear cardboard boxes to every game moving forward. Wear some camouflage, stay a little incognito. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think you should. <laughs> At least the hats. <laughs> At least the hats. Yeah. 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 The extension um, cord hat. <laughs> that was so funny. They just kept whipping their heads around to move the cord. Um, ladies, thank you so much for making us laugh. The uh, best. And for a special primetime home edition of Brisket of Broads. That was so that was so much fun. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. <laughs> um thank and thank you to Karen for driving them there. Yeah, Karen rules. That was awesome. Karen Karen's rules. one of our like OG original fans that started listening in like 2019. Oh, yeah. So we one of the we, goats. We love Karen. 300 so episodes much. ago. Yeah, yeah, she's she's awesome. Um, all right, folks. Well, now it's time to go on to the next segment. Ask Bolt Fam. Will this be a two hour episode? Let's find out. No. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Time to put your money where your mouth is. Oh, hi, guys. Don't jam a thumb up his butt. Oh, that's what you do. I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like totally appreciated. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. Okay, love you, boy. That's right, folks. Time for Ask Bolt Fam. And we start off with Bolted 513. Who asked the question? 
I burped. He did. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, fellas. As a lifetime diehard Chargers fan, 34 years to be exact because I'm 34, duh, I wanted to come on here and help you positive uh, talk. Uh, what the f***? Positive folk. <laughs> <laughs> help you positive folk remain positive i know this will be read after our sunday night football game and we may be really high or really really low but let's face it we've all been struggling keeping our confidence so far this season we have seen worse we have seen better does it suck that we are the worst best team in the league yes yes it does <laughs> does it suck that Mahomes can go out uh, go out there playing like Uncle Rico and that pretty boy, Mr. Swift, and still win games? Yes, that sucks, too. <laughs> Does it suck that we have the same amount of wins as the Pony Boys? Yes, that sucks actually a lot. Does it suck that the right turds are second in our division and the queefs are not budging at numero uno? Well, yes, that sucks even more. But, but, both fam, we have been here before. <laughs> Herbie is our QB. I know his clutchness is being questioned as of late, but make no mistake, he is still that guy. He is a dog. And big and uh and who knows? Maybe the football gods will bless our team and the powder blue family and take us to the big dance. Season's far from over, guys. And also, I have never felt more connected to all of you. Uh, we laugh together, we cry together, and we always hold each other up, and that's what it's all about. Togetherness and love and positivity and football, damn it. Whoa, I didn't mean to go all hippie on you, but I think that's what this family needs right now. Shoot, I submitted some loving words from Mike Dub because not only is he my favorite offensive player, and the broads are f***ing amazing for putting that together. But that's what we do. We lift each other up during the lows. Oh, yes, a question. Well, I don't really have one this time. Just curious to see how many bolt predictions came true this week against Chai Town. And all I wanted to do was come and sprinkle positive vibes for you instead of the other way around, as you do for me every single week. By the way... You wonderful human beings now have me and my family making our own predictions. I attached a picture so you fellas can take a look and see how shamelessly positive we are as well. As always, BTFU fam, FTR, FTC, FTB, K love you, bye. Love you. That was a lot, yes. That was amazing, thank you. Ah, uh, that's, that's a 513. That is what, when we when we look at this team and we're like, what can we do to help this team? And we go through all the list of superstitions we could possibly do thinking that that has some effect on oh, this does. team. It does. It definitely does. Knowing sometimes that it does. It does. <laughs> sometimes the kilt magic works. Sometimes the kilt magic doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't mean we know it every week, which one, but they're working. If we win. <laughs> sometimes they work, but what we can control, what we can do is we can be there for the other fans and not try to, you know, tear them down or be overly negative or overly critical. Like, it's fine to do that if that's what you want to do. But I can control how I interact with you guys. And I mm. love you guys. I love the Bolt fam. And I, that's why I try to be shamelessly positive every week is because I'm here to lift you guys up. I see you guys are down. Well, let me try to bring, bring some shameless positivity to you. So um, I love that. And, and I got to share the picture because... Yeah. This is awesome. This isn't Pretty like one or two bold predictions. These no, are no. like they no, these are Kevin, parlays. Kevin's parlays, these are parlays put for to shame sure. with some of these. Yeah, and it's the whole. It's six. It's seven. Seven <laughs> family members doing. Let it. me put it up here so everybody can see. I mean, look at this. <laughs> this is insane. It's so awesome. <laughs> this, this is like beautiful mind stuff. Like everybody's got at least three bold predictions. It if looks not like, more. It looks like Daddy was the closest. Looks was pretty, Daddy the closest the score. Yeah, 35 35 to 17. Wise, yeah 35 17 but liz had 30 um, to 10 that's only off by three liz and daddy are really where it's at on this yeah. uh, bolt prediction that's you really add close. Them. Um, yeah that, that's good find the average yeah that's pretty <laughs> close the the, sick. the actual bolt predictions are i don't i mean herbo had two tds liz liz hit on that one for sure 
Uh, this is great. No, I'm gonna no, steal. this is awesome. And yeah. I, I, like, everybody should have this because <laughs> it gives you something to look forward to during the yeah. game and just be like, how right could I be? I mean, uh -huh. doesn't well, we, just have to be Kevin hitting like three we, right bolt predictions. In how one game. many times have we done this and we've only had one perfect bolt prediction? Yeah, they they happen. It's you got to do them to see if, if you, you get don't it right. try. It won't happen. You miss a hundred percent of the bolt predictions you don't take. Don't make. <laughs> Well, this is awesome. Bolted 513. Thank you for, Thank you. for sharing all of this with us. Um, this and the is, Chiefs did awesome. lose this weekend. So yeah. Dude, Basically, everything that you were bummed about worked out. The Raiders lost. The Queefs lost. It was <laughs> awesome. It, it was, was fantastic. Great weekend. Yeah. I think we're second place now. I think we are. Uh, yeah, because yeah, we, <laughs> we're recording this Monday night, and we saw that the Raiders lost. They're uh, three and five now. Yeah, so... so we're pretty Suck much it. Super Bowl champions. Here we go. After beating the AFC Bears. West is ours. And I and I I know I'm shamelessly <laughs> positive and I'm dumb, whatever. But I will just no. say that the I said it on the instant reaction. The Chiefs do not have an easy two games coming up at all. They have yeah, to go, they to, Germany, to, go to Germany and play, Germany to the, play Dolphins. the Dolphins, who are gonna they're gonna score like crazy. I don't care how good that defense is, unless Mahomes shows up and puts up thirty, they're not gonna win. Yeah. And then they go play Philadelphia, who is a pain in the ass after their bye week. So there's no reason why they can't be have four losses coming, you know, in three weeks. So, you know, it positivity. I love it. <laughs> Bolted five one three. Thank you for the shameless positivity. We love it. Uh, let's move on now to Jack Rich, who asked the question. All right, positive thoughts, positive thoughts. We solidified our places as the top dogs. Statistically, we are undoubtedly the best team in the NFL. I'll break it down for you. We beat the Bears. Bears lost to the Packers. Packers lost to the Vikings. Vikings <laughs> lost to the Buccaneers. Buccaneers lost to the Lions. Lions lost to the Seahawks. Seahawks lost to the Rams. Rams lost to the Cowboys. <laughs> Cowboys lost to the 49ers. 49ers lost to the Bengals. Bengals lost to the Titans. Titans lost to the Colts. Colts <laughs> lost to the Saints. Saints <laughs> lost to the Texans. Texans lost to the Panthers. Panthers lost to the Falcons. Falcons lost to the Commanders. Jeez. Commanders <laughs> lost to the Eagles. Eagles <laughs> lost to the Jets. Jets lost to the Patriots. Patriots lost to the Dolphins. Dolphins lost to the Bills. Bills lost to the Jaguars. Jaguars lost to the Chiefs. Chiefs lost to the Broncos. Broncos lost to the Raiders. And we beat the fucking Raiders. Just one more time because it feels so good. Fuck the Raiders. Put the F up. Oh, that was such a beautiful way of saying we beat the Raiders. <laughs> Bringing it all oh, back home. And I believe this is certified fresh. <laughs> no, oh, my like, God, dude. Wow. Oh, it really does. I feel like we beat the Raiders. We, in the offseason, people ask us, like, what, what makes a good season for you? I feel like just beat the Raiders. One, beat the Raiders twice. Then kind of everything after that is cherry on top. Yeah. If you beat the Raiders yeah. twice, it's a good year. Just them Things suffering. Yeah. Oh, it was great. We had we had uh, somebody messaged us was like, you know, after we lost to that last game, they're like, yeah, the Raiders are ahead of you. You guys suck. I'm like, I hate you so much. <laughs> Dude, Raider fans gonna, are so dumb. They're about to implode. <laughs> Devontae Adams had one catch for like 12 yards tonight. Oof. Yeah. He was bitching about uh, when they won and he he got a decent amount of looks Oof, tonight. Yeah. I don't know if it was a statement from Jimmy G like, oh, you want to complain? I'm not throwing you the ball. We could see him get traded tomorrow. Or today, as this recording is out. He might already oh, yeah, true. This is the yeah. last day trade tra deadline yeah. is today. Ooh, buddy. Wow. Well, we'll see just what happens. But the Raiders, Nation, I just, you gotta love I love that I, I, I didn't count, but I'm pretty sure he went through all 32 <laughs> teams in that state. I could be wrong. That was incredible. <laughs> um, Jack Rich, that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you for all the effort in that. That was, that was so much effort, and it was so worth it. Was Thank great. you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Mr. Peck R, who asked the question. Yesterday was a thing of beauty. Our guys looked hot, hot, hot on the field and off. 
But as I was tubing down the Aragatuan tunnels in Kauai, I was reminded that we are the best, okay? Watching a Chief fan lose as cool as they lost, I consoled him with a picture on my phone of Taylor Swift. I literally just showed him a picture of Taylor Swift and said, I hope your girl Taylor likes the, uh, like the Chiefs continue to not show up. <laughs> he just glared. Anyways... I don't know if you guys see this, but uh, y'all almost to 4K subs. Hey, congrats. Any plans if Charger Chat Podcast makes it to 5K? Uh, but back to my uh, the swagtastic boys in uh, Powder Blue. Who has the best swag on the bolts this year so far on and off the field? Okay. BTFU, FTR, and K Love you. Bye. All right. I'm, I'm jealous of the vacation, Mr. Peckar, for sure. He, yeah, but that's we did a- our, <laughs> we did our hangout on, um, on Patreon, and he was yes. just sitting on this beautiful beach, hanging out with us. I was like, yeah. oh God, this is so awesome. Zoom it's hangout crazy. on the beach, looking out on the waters, just like, <laughs> Zoom a bitch. Zoom a bitch. Um, but I love that line. <laughs> just saying, I hope, I hope your girl Taylor, like the Chiefs, continues to not show up. Yeah, which was also delicious that they played Taylor Swift at the end of that game to shake it off. Shake it oh, off. You're oh, gonna, you're just God. asking for that. You're asking for it at this point. They're going to so get trolled bad, by yeah. every team in the NFL is going to play that if they win. Yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. Um, <laughs> he all said 100%. Like, for, that's, pretty, that's pretty, our, pretty sure it's 100%. Pretty 100%. sure. Yeah. 99? No. 100%. 80% of the time, every time. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So, uh, who has the best swag on the bolts this year so far on and off the field? Well, on the field, I, they all wear the same thing, don't they? Well, <laughs> or am I not thinking right? Justin wore an arm sleeve. The sleeve. Oh, glasses. right. Yeah, the sleeve made a return. Middle finger. Yeah. yeah, the awesome. middle finger cast was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I say that's pretty swaggy for he sure. He also wore a Traeger hat. He's literally walking around game. doing this to every opponent the yeah, whole time. The whole time. Like this is cannot be cooler. <laughs> so I I, cooler. I give it to him on on the field for sure. Off the field, what was somebody? The, some of the guys wore some Halloween costumes that were freaking. Keenan, Keenan funny. wore the Jason Voorhees. Yeah, Voorhees, cool. and he walked up to the and he said yeah. it was because the th- you know Friday the thirteenth. Thirteenth. So. Yeah. So good. Love I'll give that. it. To, I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him for the. Uh, you know, off yeah, Ke- Keenan usually is like the best, has the best Josh swag. Josh Palmer like, just is pretty in. swaggy off the He's field. He's pretty too. swaggy. There's a lot of swaggy guys on this team. It's hard yeah. to really just pinpoint sure. one, but uh, it's hard to pull off pantsuits. And some of these guys are, they can do it. Like leather pantsuits, you know, yeah. the leather shorts that uh, yeah, <laughs> Khalil Mack had. Khalil Mack wore leather, leather shorts. shorts. Like, that's pretty swaggy. That's a rare look. Yeah. That's just confidence. He pulls it off. You could do whatever you want. Oh, he could he back. could wear a clown suit and they'd be like, No one's gonna nice. say nothing. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Good call. Where do I get one of those? <laughs> like, oh, um, can't do this all too. right. <laughs> Mr. Pekar, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Lexi M. Lexi. Who asked the question? Well, I have some apologizing to do. I realize now it was me that made us woos. This week, I made sure I had my Herbert jersey on and put the Chargers bandana on my kitty cat. But wow, they did it. Our boys played so amazing. It made me need a spice juice box to celebrate and then kiss my husband in the same, in some interesting places. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was too much information. I'm so sorry. I'm just so excited by how amazing everyone looked. That was the most cohesive game we've seen in, well, a long damn time. Okay, now that I've gotten settled, I just want to say, Eka's amazing. Herbo not letting his fingers slow him down anymore, and the way Joey and Duran have started to make up for their past mistakes was electrifying. I was bolting the f*** up so hard. Oh, wow. There we go again. Sorry. Guess I should just get to my question. Number one, how did you all celebrate? Two, Kevin Adam. I'm sorry I couldn't watch the live stream, but I hope it went well. Did you enjoy doing it? And can we look forward to more? And three, what is the next SoFi game that you guys will be attending? Uh, Lots to... Yeah, and Lexi, you have very cute meow meow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's share share the meow meow. Gotta get the meow meow. Yeah. It, you know the cats you can't really tell based on the look if they're enjoying themselves or not just that's just the cat thing but this cat feels pretty excited about wearing this bandana yeah this cat it's got some good swag going yeah it's it's swaggy <laughs> this, this is swaggy 
That's a that's a swaggy mama. That is, mm-hmm. uh, I love that bandana. I've got two cats, and they never wear anything. So I is think like I need to get some. Like, you put it on them, and they're just like, like that. I haven't even tried Crazy because they're head. so skittish. I feel like they would just flip out like a Jim Brewer in Half Baked. But uh, yeah. um, I do. A bandana might be the move. I might have to give that a do shot. It. Do it. So very cute, Lexi. I love that. All right, but to answer the questions, how did we celebrate? Uh, a long, like going to slow bed hug. and having a nice, when, yeah, went long, to sleep. peaceful rest. Yeah, uh, you know, not plagued with like being in my head, going like, "Why the f- did this happen? Like, yeah. <laughs> why did yeah. they just throw the fucking cue? It, it was, was just, wide open. <laughs> we celebrated <laughs> with a very <laughs> confident <laughs> rest. <laughs> wide open every time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the older you get, the late night games you celebrate just a little less. <laughs> <laughs> but well, it's you harder celebrate. for you guys too. That game started at seven. I know it was time. pretty late by the time yeah, that Adam, game was over. <laughs> Adam had work in the morning, and yeah. I was like, "Hey man, let's watch a movie. Hang hey, out. Let's do something. Let's I'm celebrate." Like, and you're like, "Kevin, get, get out of my out. <laughs> 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 I gotta go to work." I'm like, All right, fine. I'm, I'm sorry. I love you, but <laughs> I gotta be up. No, in like that's six hours. <laughs> that's how close we are. You can tell the other person to fuck off, and we're not gonna take it personal. Exactly. No, yeah. I would have. I, I would have loved nothing more than just to sit there and just relish. Watch highlights. Yeah. Yeah. If that were um, a three o'clock start, I would have watched the highlights. Oh, it. easily. Yeah. Two movies I would have watched with you. 100%. <laughs> um, uh, so, and the question about the live stream, uh, we are planning to do more uh, live streams. So if you are interested, definitely keep an ear open over at Patreon. We'll uh, be sending out notices and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, and we'll up the production value just a little bit more. Yeah. And we're going to not was, get... Not get strikes from YouTube. It'll no, be great. It was literally the first time we ever live streamed anything, and we were just kind of flying by the seat of our pants, going like, "Okay, well, all right, so I got to click this." <laughs> I yeah, it was, it this. was so. We didn't do a test run. That was the test run. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and the next SoFi game, uh, I think we're hoping for the Denver game, right? In uh, week December, seventeen, week sixteen. That was the hope. Yeah, that that yeah. is the hope. We're, we. We're the next one we have is the Packer game. Adam and I are going to the Packer game. Correct. On the docket. That's, but yeah. What about you, Kyle? Are you going to any other games? You're going to be able to sneak over there? Um, yeah, I'm going to try to. The baby came a little earlier than we thought. He was due on Sunday, but he came 11 days early. So uh, I may be able to sneak away to a couple more. Our, our other brother, so our one brother in law is a Bears fan, our other brother in law is a Ravens fan. My sisters just decided that they didn't want to marry Charger fans. They chose for poorly. whatever reason. <laughs> so I, I might try to go to that Ravens game with uh, my brother-in-law, Brad. But That'd we'll be see. awesome. That'd be yeah. cool. Very cool. All right. Well, there you go, Lexi. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Zachary Shelton, who asked the question. So let's talk about Keenan Allen. I have two questions that relate to him after Sunday's performance. One. He only needs 70 yards to reach 10,000 yards in his career. Do you think he gets that on Monday Night Football next week? And two, with all the players that are going to be big big in the offseason of whether to keep or not, is he leaning more towards someone to keep for next year, in your opinion? Go Bolts. All right. Keenan Allen, 10,000 yards. Is that happening Monday night? Yeah, come on. Of course. It's going to be tough. I think he might right get there because that defense is pretty dang good for the yeah. Jets, but I why not? Let's go for it. I'm be positive about it. Let's do yeah, it. he's averaging more than 70 yards a game right now as it is, so stays on no track. No reason why yeah, it shouldn't happen. Jets are good, and they are gonna. They know that that's the guy they have to try to shut down, but she was positive here. He's getting He always finds a way to get open. I mean, yeah. they, they just had a video maybe a week or two ago about how he how good he is at route running and how good he is at making these... Uh, the secondary just not know what what way he's going to go and finding yeah. a way to get open. And Herbert throws the ball so hard, so fast, so accurately. I think it's going to happen. I think yeah. it should happen Monday night. Um, and as far as whether or not we keep him, yeah. I, I mean, if he's having yeah. the best season of his career, like, why wouldn't you? You're, it's not going to require a five-year deal. Like, he knows the, the stage of the career, his career that he's in. Right. But you sign him to another two- or three-year deal, I mean... It's kind of I don't know how you wouldn't. He's, yeah. he's such a reliable piece. If he for can Justin, stay healthy he's not, all year too, yeah, yeah, he's not slowing down. He's played a lot. He you know he has been hurt in the past, but he's played more than he's been out 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So he is reliable in that sense, and he's just still Keenan Allen, and he will be ten thousand like yards season. for the Chargers. That's a lot. We've we've screwed up so many times with like Charger legends at the end of their career, letting yeah. him go somewhere else to finish off, like LT going to the Jets and Philip going to the Colts. It's like let's just get one that we, Can we get one right. See <laughs> all it. like. I guess Gatesy we saw all the way through, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, but it'd be great to see Keenan all the way through to the end of his career. Yeah, big time. <clears throat> um, all right. Well, there you go, Zachary Shelton. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on out to Luis Fernando Areza, who asked the question. Hey, guys, just wanted to apologize for not being as active the last couple of weeks. After the losses, I couldn't watch any lick of football at all. Fans were making it unbearable, which sucks because my whole YouTube feed is just NFL 24-7. Anyways, Charger Dub, I'm pumped. All these fans still finding a way to complain. I really didn't care for that. Uh, we didn't score any points in the second half. As long as Dicker kept making those kicks, I was fine, especially with that lead. Anyways, my question is, do you believe that coaches make teams run harder plays or plays that they haven't practiced enough when they have a lead? That's my only theory as to why the offense was not as explosive as the first half. If the Chiefs can have practice mid-game, why can't the Chargers, LOL, BTFU, and K-Love you bye? Interesting theory. <laughs> like, all right, we've got a lead. Let's try some things we haven't really practiced all that much. <laughs> Let's roll the dice on some plays. I don't know. Do you, what do you guys think? Not everybody at once. <laughs> oh, sorry. Kevin was stroking his beard as if he was about to say something. No, I'm pondering. I guess I'm pondering. formulating a thought. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I still don't know why we can't get anything going in the second half. It is yeah. just very weird to me, very bizarre. Um, Because we come out fast and we, we score early. It's not a problem. It's not... Yeah. Um, I'm just not sure why that's rearing its ugly head in the second half for the last three or four weeks. It's just mm -hmm. kind of odd. A little bit, yeah. I mean, the the idea of trying things that might not work might be a bit of a stretch there, Luis. I don't know if they're if the other team's just making those kind of adjustments halfway through uh, or what, but uh, it's a great question. Um, it almost feels like a little bit, and I may be off base here, is that we're you know we when you get up like that, especially. We're just trying to run the ball to control the clock, and we were not right. effective running the ball very, very much. No, we were. No, like that was a rough. Yeah, we had like set 50, 60 yards, something like that total the whole game. So, mm -hmm. um, if they can figure out a way to be consistently good at running the ball, that'll be a lot easier, help time of possession, and hopefully be better in the second half. Yeah. All right, there you go, Luis Fernando Areza. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Athir Kadir. Athir Kadir, who asked the question. Kevin and Coach, this is for both of you, baby! Herbert is my baby! No one else! He is my baby! I love the way he played on Sunday! I wanted to play like this every week for us to make a run! Impossible playoffs, baby! My question is, can he take over the leadership role and do what he's supposed to do? I know he can, but let's hear the boys, baby. FTI, love you. Bye, Chargers country. Let's ride, baby. It seems like he is this year by all accounts. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, so it's hard to say if it's like a big difference, but he seems like he has a little more confidence and a little more swag, if you will, yeah. um, around around the team. So I don't know. I, I You know, I would like to see Justin go over and talk to Austin and be like, Austin, what the fuck are you doing? Why don't you calm down? Stop saying some silly things. Um, <laughs> take control like that. You know? Right. But, um, you know, I'm sure he's doing, he's leading by example. So I'm sure, I'm sure it's going good. Well, the, uh, by all accounts, everybody that they've interviewed on this team that has been asked the question about Herbert, like what changes you've seen, they've all said that he has been more vocal, which mm -hmm. is what you want to hear in a leader it is funny though just as you were saying that i was trying to i was thinking about it going like there's not really every time the camera cuts to herbert on the sideline he is just dialed into the game he is just watching what's happening you don't really ever see him talking to any of the other players i'm sure he does i'm not saying he doesn't but it's just interesting because like you can picture like other maybe it's just when they're heated moments where they cut to quarterbacks and they're like trying to hype their team up and like trying to get them riled up or something like that maybe we would see more of that from herbert but again 
there's not a camera on the sideline all the time, so yeah. you can't say whether should or not that's be, happening. There should be a Herbert cam all the there time. There should be. Give me the Herbert so cam. Little, I'll pay you 10 so bucks a month. Yeah, a little picture yeah. in picture, just a little postage stamp at the bottom right of just a shot on him at all times. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think if you're hoping for him to be the rah-rah guy, I don't think that that's going to happen. That's just not right. who he is. Um, it depends on what your definition of leadership is. Um, I think he's going to lead by example. It's He works extremely hard. Guys all respect him. Um, but he's not going to be the rah-rah holding team meetings and telling guys what to do. And uh, that just that's just not who he is. So no. um, I think he is absolutely a leader. It's just not going to be maybe what you think of as a stereotypical. And sometimes those guys are not well-liked. Like if if you're the overly strong, vocal, silent it's type. like, come on, yeah. like shut up, dude. Like I get it. Yeah. We're, let's move on. Um, so I don't know. I I I, I like his leadership style. Uh, I think it's effective with the the NFL that you are in now with the kind of players and what they're looking for. So, um, yeah, I think he's a leader and he's going to continue to grow into that role. I mean, he's still what? This is his fifth year fifth year in the league. Right. He's got another 15. So, yeah, totally. Absolutely love it. Athir Kadir, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to House of Hain and shout out to Jason Sprinkle Sr. and Scotty B63. Y'all kind of in the same vein, but I'm going with House of Hain, who asked the question. I'll say, I'll say, slap me sideways and call me crooked. We won. I was pleasantly surprised and very happy Q got involved. I really need to see more scorn in the second half, though. All I say, all in all, a good win. Why do we, I say, why do we have to drop off in production in the second half? Is the other team making an adjustment that haunts our offense? At least for Monday night, Rodgers won't, I say Rodgers won't even be playing, though it looks like he is using magic to get better. <laughs> what, I say, what say you? Yeah, Rodgers is like, somehow. I wonder, if he, I wonder if he's doing it in, in his mind. He's like, oh God, that hurts so bad. Oh my God. Every time he takes a step, ow. he does like, oh, ow, ow, you know. Ow. Just, he's putting on a brave face. Dude, it's all, it's all fun and games until you get in the on the field and you hurt it again because you came back right. too fast. Right. Like, yeah. I don't know. That sounds that's stupid. <laughs> sounds a little crazy. A little psycho. Try to, Go you home. Tear, put your leg up. Tear your Achilles and you're going to try to play again that year. Like, Power to him if he does it and he doesn't get hurt again, but that's a little bit sketchy for a guy you're paying however many millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. an investment that's out there throwing the ball right now. You're like, oh, yeah. God, please don't hurt yourself. Um, but, yeah, as far as the drop-up in production, I it's just I don't know. Can't, can't don't put know. a finger on it. Yeah, um, I guess. Just glad that our defense is able to to hold the other teams uh, when they can. You know, mm-hmm. they're... Uh, <laughs> I wish I had a better thought. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, like it's like you said in the question. It's like as long as we're winning, I don't care if we score any points in the second half. Yeah, if you're just a team that comes out hot and we score a bunch of points, yeah, it'd yeah. be great if we, like I said in the last episode last week, is seven seven seven, and you scored twenty eight points seven each quarter. That's great. It looks it looks nice. Or um, twenty four in the first half. Cool. But we scored thirty points. It. Like yeah. look at the totality of the game. Stop breaking it up into quadrants. We scored 30 <laughs> points in that game. You know, like Very that's technical. huge. Yeah. Quadrants. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that word. Good one, Kyle. Um, all right. Well, House of Hain, Jason Sprinkle Sr., and Scotty B63. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Big Red Bolts fan who asked the question. Tick, tick, tick. The game is over, and I don't feel sick. Could it be the costumes of the brisket broad chicks or the video from that that uh, was oh so sick? Is it the donkey ass that the Chiefs did lick? Is it the Lions <laughs> fan that's shitting a brick? Who should be humping a Faders fan chick once is concluded their Monday night shtick? Still, I ask why tonight didn't click. Was it the field goals of the man named Dick? Er, nay, I say, you pompous prick. It's a question I'll ask and ask it quick. <clears throat> Why, oh why, once our win's been picked, won't our coach be smart and quietly stick? The man of said name, that being stick, into the game to play real quick, keeping our herd from getting a nick. I say, let this stick throw the ball real quick and watch him move it beyond the sticks. See if he can't score us a surprise quick six. Then let the man named of the dicks complete his busy day of sweet, sweet kicks while number 10 is massaged for his nicks and his quicks. 
Mm, that was that was fancy. That was very creative. A plus like gold yeah. star Red <laughs> Bolts fan. I love the creativity, man. Um, but the question is, I mean, we saw a bunch of backups coming in near the end of that game uh, yeah. to play for the other players, uh, but not Herbert. Uh, you don't think, see stick coming out there. I think it go honestly. I think it goes back to the other question, the leadership question. I think he just doesn't won't come out. I, I don't think coaches is like Justin. You have to come out. He's like I'm not. Sorry. Like as I can't long think as of my it. heart is beating and I can stand on two legs. Yeah, like the guy I'm plays going broke, out there. broken ribs. He's gonna finish the last series or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's at least wh- how I envision it happening. I can't imagine coaches like you know, stay out there, keep going. We're gonna we're we yeah no won. go. We almost got this. Yeah. So I don't I don't yeah I don't I don't think that's the case. I think it's more Justin just being like, no, I got this going in. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I yeah, I mean that's least. possible. When you say that, it makes me like Staley's. If that is happening, it's Staley's getting told what to do, which is not great for a head coach. Like my kids, when they tell me no, I'm like, oh, you don't really get to choose. I make the decisions here, <laughs> so go get in the bath. You um, live in my house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I do think there is some some validity to the idea that like the linemen are still in there; they're still out there grinding. Like they're putting their bodies on the line. He's like, I'm not just gonna sit out and allow somebody to go in and be my stunt double for a couple of plays. Like I want to keep clicking. And yeah, the offense wasn't really doing much in the second half. Like probably wanted to get a better feeling, like get that bad taste out of his mouth before next week. So it could be any number of reasons. Um, if they had put stick in, would I have been upset? No, I think it would have been great. There was a time there where I was like, why haven't we just like shut down Herbert for a couple of weeks. Now, looking back, we lost those games, so it would have been nice if he was just recovering and not damaging his hand further. But right. um, yeah, if, if they would have put in Easton, would have been cool with me. Um, but the fact that they didn't, maybe it's like Justin's like, I'm the quarterback, I'm playing. Um, and maybe they've had that conversation in the already leading up to the game. That's what I like to say is our coach is prepared and he knew, look, no matter what, Justin's going to stay in the game. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's part of that thing that you were talking about there, Kyle, as far as like the leadership when you're like, he's not going to be the raw, raw guy. He's going to be the guy that leads by example. And he's like, look, I'm, I am the quarterback of this team and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to finish this game. You know, it's like a pitcher on a baseball team. That's like, yeah, let me play all nine innings. Don't take me out. Don't bring in the, ah, you brought in the relief. Ah, oh, crap. All right. So it, it's a little demeaning, I guess. And maybe that's part of yeah. it because Justin's such a big sports fanatic. He played baseball and, Maybe a little bit of that's an ingrained in him. He's like, let me pitch all nine innings, coach. Come on. Let me finish this. Let me close this out. I don't know. Nice pull. That's a great question. Big Red yeah. Bolts fan. Thank you for asking it. Great let's, script, by the way. Keep it and up. Great script. Yes. Very creative. Uh, let's move it on now to Traumatic, a.k.a. XX Cavone. Nice. Who asked the question. Coach, what does Staley and Moore need to do better? From what I've just been watching and hearing in interviews and stuff, I just think they need to have some fire, like some purpose and identity. Coach Staley needs to give us an identity of this is what our team is about, and we're going to go out and execute that. It's going to be consistent. Like I was talking to my dad this weekend, and it was like, I just feel like every week teams don't have to prepare for us. They're not like, we. this is what the Chargers are. We have to stop this. Mm-hmm. It's like when you play Philly, it's like, they have an incredible running game. You better slow that down or you're going to be in deep crap. Um, whatever it might be, like when you play the Chiefs, Mahomes is a great, it's like awesome. You got to stop. Whatever it might be, like it just feels like we don't really have like a thing. We we adapt and change based on what the other team's doing instead of them adapting to what we do. Um, and I think that great teams, they have an identity and you know, and you you got to buckle up and get ready to go and try to beat them at what they do. So I don't know what that means or what that looks like, but I just think we need a little bit more identity in who we are defensively, whether that's, Hey, we're going to come at you and punch you in the mouth. Or we're going to blitz. Or we're going to bring pressure. And um, I don't know. I just, we need a little bit more grit to our team. All right. I can get so, behind that. Still time to find all that and get that yeah. worked out so we can yeah. make a little run here. Yeah, for sure. All right. Traumatic XX Cavon, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Javier Rodriguez, who asked the question. Hi, guys. Should the Chargers target a tight end or cornerback before the trade deadline? Bolter. 
I don't know if you guys saw this. Somebody tweeted the New England Patriots are kind of looking to move a certain Henry um, and is open to trade. I don't know if this is real. I don't know if it's fake. Hmm. I would love to have Hunter Henry back. Mm. Yeah, 100%. I said it a couple of weeks ago. You did? Oh, it's yeah. like, if we win this game and you're in the market, I just think that, I don't know. I think that would be awesome. Uh, cornerback would be cool. I don't, I don't see us making a big splash in the cornerback department. Mm-hmm. Especially after the bust that was JC Jackson, who still sucks. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't know. I think that Donald Parham played well, but he's not that do it all type of tight end that you're gonna right. have confidence in the running game being able to go in there and make a block. So um with Gerald Everett being hurt, I mean it's just it feels like a thin room right now. So mm-hmm. I would love I would love to go target Hunter Henry and bring him in here at midseason. Bring my yeah. sweet baby home. <laughs> please i want him back a lot so um all right well we'll find out pretty quickly here javier rodriguez thank you for asking the question let's move on now to andrew ramsey and shout out to jacob mckinney but i'm going with andrew ramsey who asked the question what's up cc gang after meeting you guys it feels different listening to the podcast now asking questions in a good way lol it's such a pleasure and hopefully kyle will be at the uh, green bay game so i can get the frosty added to my value meal now to the question after this dominant win do you think we'll see a streak of wins these next few games or does the second half performance still show the inconsistency with this team with only two field goals, a fourth down stop by the Bears, and an Austin Eck fumble? It's hard wondering if we played a different team, if 30 points would have won us the game. Maybe I just have PTSD and can't enjoy this win, LOL. K, love you, bye. I think, I think, honestly, man, a lot of us are being conditioned to look at like the what's the thing we didn't do well? Like we just, when you right. lose like that and the way we've been losing, you're kind of conditioned. So I think nothing wrong for doing that. It's just going to take a few good wins to like, not wins, be like, yeah. Oh God it still sucks. Like it, it you know, I, I, we won. That's all that matters to me. So, right. Yeah. Took home the dub. And, uh, yeah, I understand the, the, <laughs> that conditioning as well. We were talking about it, uh, at the end of the live stream where like Kevin wanted to post that, awesome little vid that he put together of the league of their own clip yeah uh, with tom hanks and he's like i don't know should i post it now like, or should we six, wait till there's, there's like six two minutes, minutes left in the, in the game, game. Yeah, yeah i was like stressing about it like god i don't want to be posting this and something great like the onside kick they get that and then they go and score and then they yeah. get another onside kick like I've seen too much crazy shit, so I just want you. You got to gird your loins a little bit, just a you little gotta, bit. You got to protect a little bit, but I'm I'm excited for hopefully I don't have to be like that moving forward at some right. point. And as far as getting a streak of wins, the possibility is absolutely there. I mean, any yeah, given I, Sunday, dude. I mean, we were looking at this. Anybody that was watching the the Broncos Chiefs game was just going to be like, "Oh, Chiefs are going to take the Broncos to town." And that was just not the case at all. I don't think they scored one touchdown. No, three field goals. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, well, well, yawning. Did poop. you guys know that one of my biggest pet peeves is people talking while they're yawning? Really? I hate it. It's so You're annoying. Welcome. You're welcome. Because then you have to repeat yourself anyways. We don't know what you said. <laughs> what? <laughs> Come again? <laughs> I love like, the genuineness. Like, you know what my like, let's biggest take a pet moment. peeves is, Kevin? <laughs> that thing Kevin just did. People that talk when they yawn. <laughs> it's it really, so really frustrating. Is. Well, it's good to know. I, I'm it glad I have, it's noted. <laughs> yeah. Next time, noted. every episode, Kevin's going to yawn and talk Finish at the your same yawn time. and then carry on your thought. <laughs> Don't do um, it. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. <laughs> But yes, absolutely. The Chargers can totally go on a streak. This is a this this was a huge win. This was a seventeen point win. I don't care what team they were playing. If the Bears are the worst team in the league, it doesn't matter. This is a blowout win for the Chargers. It's gonna invigorate these guys and to be yeah. like, all right, let's go out and play harder. This defense right. already is playing better just because they're having fun yeah. going out there during this game. Even if it is against the Bears, doesn't matter. That's a big win for the Chargers. I don't remember the last time we had a double-digit win, honestly. Did we have one last year? I don't remember. We had a comfortable win against the Colts. 
there towards the end of the year. Yeah. I want to say that was a multiple score victory, but I. That's possible. Not, I'm looking well, right now. They're rare. Yeah. The we point won. being, <laughs> it's we a won. rarefied win for the Chargers to win by double digits. So I think Oof. they can absolutely go on a win streak here for sure. I'm looking right now. <laughs> all like, yeah, no, nothing. All right. That's all, I think seven was the most. Uh, we won by 17 against the Colts, 20 to three. Okay. So that, that was, was a huge win. Yeah. 17 points. Oh, uh, we beat the shit out of the Rams. We beat them 21 uh, by, beat them by 20. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We kicked the crap out of the Rams. That's right. Okay. But everything else was three or four points. Okay. Like, that's just. Yeah. It's a, it's rare for the Chargers to get a double digit win, regardless of the team they play against. Every NFL team is always going to be somewhat of a challenge. Nobody's just going to lay down and let you walk over them. They're still going to come out there any and given fight. Sunday, like you said, yeah. look at what happened across the league. Like teams lose to bad teams. That's just what happens sometimes. Right. So, Andrew Ramsey and Jacob McKinney, thank you guys for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Mickey Coates, who asked the question. Can we at least give a shout out to those damn donkeys? They finally managed to do something right for once in their lives by beating those f***ing Chiefs. Oh, it's not every day you see an eight-year losing streak to a divisional rival come to an end. Now, if the Chiefs lose again and we beat the Chiefs week 18, we may actually be able to take the AFC West crown. It's not likely, but I am saying there's a chance. Oh, boy. Saying there's a chance. Listen. What was all that one in a million left. times? <sighs> if uh, if uh, Jack Rich is to be believed, we're the best team in the league right now. So he did the math. He, he did showed the math. his work. He showed his work. We are the best team in the league. We could absolutely take the Chiefs down. It's, no it's question fun. about it. There is a slightly fun thing about like watching the other games. Starting, you start to see how everything's shaking up in your division and your conference, and you start rooting against but this teams. whole league. It makes it. It's it's almost a little bit more fun than fantasy for me. Like watching and hoping that the Lions beat the shit out of the Raiders. There's something about like, oh, I'm a Lions fan right now. Like this yeah. is cool. And you, this this is the part of the season where you get to do that. And I would recommend if you guys all go look at kind of where the teams you need to lose are. And then start enjoying those games because they're just as fun mm -hmm. when, when it gets to that stage. Oh, big time. Absolutely. So, Mickey Coates, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Derwin's Dirty Duck, who asked the question. My golly gosh, so glad we took the win. Maybe my post last week was a week early. You know, the one where I made a prediction on a win over KC and a breakout game for Derwin and Quentin? Both these guys looked better this week. Herbert, enough said. Way to silence the media, my man. Can't believe the way they have come for him over the past two weeks. Two bad games. And they're talking about him like he is Derek fucking Carr. <laughs> anyway, how great is it to have a reliable kicker? Dicker the goddamn kicker. He just makes kicks. Considering this is an area we have absolutely sucked in for years, how good does it feel? Anyway, my question is, how the hell did the Broncos beat Kansas City? I didn't see any of the game. What adjustments did they make after watching Kansas City beat us? Surely they learned a lot from our game? Would love to know your thoughts. What can we take from that for our upcoming games against the Chiefs and the Ponies? I watched a lot of that game, and yeah. it's what we did to them in the second half. They were manning, and then they were just getting a pass rush going. He got sacked a lot that game, mm. and they shut down Kelsey. Like, that's how you beat that team. Yeah. Um, just good cornerbacks, and they have great cornerbacks. So they were able to, you know, match up with those wide receivers and shut them down. And he was just getting frustrated. Like, at the end, he was being chased around in the pocket so much, and they were containing him properly. Like, the last sack, he ran into his own player. It was, was like the so butt funny. fumble. Yes. It was like the butt fumble. He ran That's into great. his own lineman and fell on his back. I was just like, <laughs> you <laughs> dickhead. <laughs> so, yeah. th th it's there. You know, blue. It's the blueprint was right there. And, yeah. you know, Whatever you need to do to get him like not feeling great, get him sick or whatever the game before you that's that's what you need to do also. Right. And get the tape, wake the tape guy up so you guys can watch some freaking yeah, film they, on this. That's the difference. Right. They had their tape guy. He was tape on guy. top of it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. They pay they they pay their tape guy. <laughs> yeah, Bill, the Bronco tape guy. Not yeah. Bob. Yeah. Not Bob. Bill. Not Bob. 
Yeah, the tape guy has got to have a name start with the letter B for sure. <laughs> Bill E somewhere out So there. far, Bob's got one star on yeah, Amazon. One star. But, uh, God damn it, Bob. <laughs> Derwin's Dirty Bob. Duck, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Darius, who asked the question. I found out my landlord is a Patty Mayo fan. Should I move and just stop paying rent? Certified fresh as well. Welcome, mm. Darius Asparagai. Well, and I love this fresh nickname too, Patty Mayo. That's that my Patrick new nickname Mahomes? for Patrick Mahomes. Yes. Patty Mayo. <laughs> Patty Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, I think you have, you know, a defendable case in court. Yeah. Um, I, I, think, I think this is a solid yeah, case. Yeah. I think irreconcilable <laughs> differences. 100%. Yeah, you, you just need to find a judge that's a Charger fan or just not a Chiefs fan. And I think you could probably walk out of this thing pretty, yeah. you know, as long free. as they're not free, a Chiefs yeah. fan, they hate Patrick Mahomes, so you're yeah. fine. The odds are yeah. in your favor, so I, yeah. I, I do not. We are not giving you advice um, on what advice. to do in this situation. Yeah, yeah, but this it is seems like it might work. <laughs> if you're month to month and you've already paid this month, then yes, just move out and stop paying rent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great advice. If you're well, under contract, maybe pay him like. <laughs> 10 cents short on every one. Just a little <laughs> Justin Herbert, stick it to him. There or I don't know if your landlord lives in the same building, play Taylor Swift songs all throughout the night. There you go. And uh, he'll let you out of your, let you out of your lease. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's good advice for people moving forward. Before you sign that lease, put a little addendum in there. Yeah. Being they like, get to ask be you a Patrick questions. Mahomes you should ask them questions. Too. Yeah. yeah. If this, this is, is a good fit for you. Yeah. I want to make sure this is a good fit for me. <laughs> Does Patty Mayo ring a bell to you at all? Yeah. Does that make sense? I'm going to say a couple of words. You tell me what comes to mind. <laughs> Patty Mayo. Does this mean anything to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you run stomach forward? Is that how you run? <laughs> all right. Darius, thank you for uh, asking the question. Yeah. Um, let's move it on now to... Uh, Friar Bolt, who asked the question. Finally, a win where I didn't need to be given life-saving medical attention. Although I was still not comfortable up three scores with four minutes left in the game. Guess too many years have trained me to never be comfortable with any weed. Blowouts just don't happen often. Anyways, a happy Halloween to you gentlemen and all the Bolt fam out there. Please celebrate safely. My question is, what is your favorite Halloween costume you have worn or one you wish you could do on Halloween? Bolt up, K love you, bye. We didn't, we, we haven't really leaned into the Halloween aspect of this show. This <laughs> hasn't been very spooky. I know. So kind of not this episode, it. no. Damn it. Saved all the Halloween questions for the end. Shit. Go out um, spooky. <laughs> I'm excited about my upcoming costume. My son is a big fan of the 1971 Willy Wonka and the That's Chocolate so Factory. Good. I love that. Like he so watches much. it almost every night to go to bed. <laughs> so, and my other son, we celebrate his potty training with an Oompa Loompa song that I made up. Oompa <laughs> Loompa Doompa Dee Doo. Declan went potty and so can you. And he's just like clapping, like, yeah, dad. <laughs> fucking lighter this is my comes jam. out. This is my fucking <laughs> shit. Turn it uh, up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going as an, a full grown man Oompa Loompa Love with the it. wig and everything tomorrow. So um, and he's he's Willy Wonka and I'm uh, I'm his Oompa Loompa. Awesome. He better awesome. not boss me around because I'm not that kind of Oompa Loompa. I'm just for show. He's got a little he just blows a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> you run up and get the candy and bring it back to him. <laughs> he stands on the sidewalk. Yeah, that's the. <laughs> oh, shit. That'd be awesome. That'd be fucking rad. <laughs> How about you, Kyle? Any favorite costumes of Halloween's past? Oh, you had a really good one one year, I remember. Yeah. So one year, I used to work in downtown San Diego and I didn't park in the building. I would park a couple miles away and I would ride my skateboard into work. And this one Halloween, I dressed up in full Nacho Libre costume. Oh, yes. Spandex. No shirt, spandex on with the shorts, cape. And it was beautiful. Riding down into work with my cape in the wind on my skateboard in the streets of downtown San Diego. It oh, was glorious. It was awesome. Yeah, that was definitely. I'm not a huge Halloween guy. Um, I love it with the kids now. Obviously, they have so much sure. fun. They're all 
different. I traumatized you too much with the horror movies. That's what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm not a huge huge Halloween guy, but the Nacho Libre year was memorable. That's that awesome. <laughs> I love that. Um, I'm trying to think of different costumes I've worn in the past. Like there's some there's so many times for me when I was a kid putting on costumes. It's like I am Wolverine or I am. <laughs> the punisher but it's like no you've got a stupid plastic mask on you're wearing a onesie that ties at the top and the back and if you're wolverine you don't have sharp claws you have these dull rounded ass claws that (laughs) couldn't cut like (laughs) couldn't cut butter so um i'm trying to think one of my favorites uh i mean one of my favorites is based off of like in my mind i was like oh this rocks (laughs) but it was I remember I wanted to go as a beast from the X-Men uh, at work. So I was like, okay, I can't like be full, like beast. Like I'm, I'm beast, like on the cheap. So I've got like, he's a doctor. He's Dr. Hank McCoy. So I put on like a doctor outfit. I put a little name tag and I like painted my hands blue and I painted my head blue and I put like a little kind of like animal nose on. And so I was walking around and people are like, what are you Smurf? And I was like, no, I'm an- Beast. It's that moment where you're like, no, I'm supposed to be Hank McCoy. I'm from, he's an X Men. I mean, it's <laughs> sad. Oh, it's on the name tag. <laughs> you wouldn't get it. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, Housewares is over here. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. But uh, yeah, I need I need a redemption Halloween. I need a I need Sounds a. Like a it. I need a year where I just have like the best costume. I need to win an award or something. So yeah. I think I don't think it'll be this Halloween, but next Halloween, I need to go balls to the wall. Just like somebody, I need to go like full makeup, like cast up my face, it feels like, like paint that, on it, it. That feels like you. It does. Yeah, I need that in my life. Yeah. So yeah, I, I saw a really funny thing on social media where if we ever go to a Charger game around Halloween, like the Halloween game, mm-hmm. you these guys win as paparazzi and they just run up to like whoever the character is, like Waldo, like Waldo, tell us about blah blah blah, just like flash. <laughs> they flash people Waldo, with their where cameras. You been? We yeah, seen you and then they have another buddy that comes out as a security guy. Like, whoa, 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 guys, back off, back off. So nice. like you're like that. I, that would be really fun to do. That is fun. I love that. Um, all right, Friar Bolt, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Bolt to the Future, who asked the question. I said, God damn, man, all those screens to Eckler and the ball being spread out to Parham and QJ got me feeling all tingly inside. I can't remember the last time I felt so confident. One of my best coach games by far. Can you pick three players and what they should be for Halloween? All right, all right. let's all pick one. Pick a player. What should they be for Halloween? Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be funny and witty. I'm going to go. Coming. I'm just going to take Justin Herbert. That way Kevin can't. Um, bitch. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with Justin Herbert as Ken. Ken is kind of relevant this year. I was the thinking Barbie that. Movie. Yeah. He's got the Ken kind of vibe to him. He does. Um, so I'm going to go Justin Herbert, Ken. Okay. I'll go Eastern answer. Stick, Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> they should go as Ken and Barbie. That'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. Man, there's... Easton Stick doesn't recover from that, dude. <laughs> no, no. He's a team player. That shows you he's committed he to this team. Recover uh, from you know, you can't recover from going as Barbie. No coming back from going as Barbie. You're retiring as a Charger if you dress up as Barbie. <laughs> yeah. Give yeah. you a lifetime contract. Yeah. <laughs> um, ah, man. Those are good ones. Um, th- this feels like a cop out, but I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to say Joey Bosa as. Uh, as Jason or Mike yeah, Meyer or something like that. Like yeah. one of the defensive linemen. I mean, you could pick any of the, like the scary, you know, big menacing, like slasher dudes and just be like, Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Dick of the kicker as Arnold from kindergarten cop. Yeah. Or... Dicker needs to dress up as like any oh, Arnold, any character. Arnold thing he wants. It'd even be cool to be like the, at the predator at the end where he's covered in mud. <laughs> like that would be cool. Come on, do it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Bolt to the future. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on Thanks, now man. to Salty Sports Guy. Oh, it's been a minute. 
been a hot minute who asked the question. How great was last night? I stay off Twitter during games and come back after the games naively expecting hugs and high fives. And instead, it was a bunch of nitpicking and complaints. I'll never understand that. I've been waiting years for a dominant win like that. Anyway, here's my question. Each of you name one overrated Halloween candy and one underrated Halloween candy. No repeats. Okay, so I will say one overrated candy that really bothers me is that it's always in my kids' buckets, and I steal their candy, obviously, while they're sleeping because I like yeah, to snack dad when I watch movies. Dad, dad tax. You live in my house. These are my rules. Um, but I won't touch those fucking almond joys. are terrible. I am not an almond joy guy at all. It's just like an almond joy. I get it, and it's just like... I just spit it out because then the, you're stealing the candy and you're just opening it without looking at what you have. It's kind of exciting. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, box <laughs> kind of chocolates for a scum thing. You never know what you're going to yeah. get. And you get an almond joy in there and it's like it ruins your night. I kind of yeah, like, my an, night. I kinda like almond joys. They're a nice switch. You know what my biggest pet sweet. peeve is? Almond joys. You liking almond joys. <laughs> just mm, you okay. liking almond joys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my overrated candy, because like you said, Kev, it's just popularity. It's in every single like Costco candy bag is Laffy Taffy or oh, yeah or suckers like I don't want a sucker when I'm going like I'm Good I'm rapid call. firing candies Good you know like call. I'm not gonna yeah. I really put some and, brakes on it yeah it's, just, it's a governor on your candy intake <laughs> nobody wants that a governor on your candy intake I'm trying to go 70 miles an hour a sucker gets in my way <laughs> you just like force it down to you like oh, I gotta eat it. It's here. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Wow. I think that's the first time that phrase has ever been uttered. And I'm glad we did it here first. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> um, all right. An overrated candy. I mean, I I would say similarly, just because it's in every Halloween candy. I don't know who is keeping this candy afloat in any way because i'm excited i don't know how it's stuck around this long tootsie rolls who Uh, the (laughs) oh great it's halloween time for some tootsie (laughs) rolls dude give me like a vanilla i like the flavor tootsie rolls too i kind of like those too i kind of like those but like Oh, it's just it look it's not visually appealing you're just like well yeah. this is a cat turd it <laughs> yeah, kind of true. tastes like chocolate like maybe that's chocolate sat next to it during the assembly yeah. but it is not anything that is so unappealing i don't uh, like the it, little ones i like the the long ones with the little cardboard no, underneath it doesn't matter no. <laughs> that's a oh, bigger piece of turd special about the cardboard uh, that is true you know that's what i'm talking true. about Oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> the presentation is there with the cardboard. It makes I'm not it saying it's a top device. rated candy by any stretch, but I don't yeah. know how it has survived I feel as long as it has. No, that's so true. I, I feel that. Yeah. yeah. What um, about right. underrated? Yeah. Underrated, Kevin. What's like. So one of your I, I feel I think it's important to have a good mixture of styles. So I think there's always way too much chocolate given out. Mm, so okay. whenever I can get a. It, whenever I, something like mm. that, I wasn't going to say that, but I was thinking more like whenever there's a Twizzler in there, it's like mm. it's like ginger when you're having sushi. It's a palate cleanser. Mm. Mm. You can cleanse the palate and then go back to the rest of the 80% chocolate you have. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will go with Twizzlers. Gotcha. That's true. I Mine's almost like the flip of the first one. It's it, I don't see it a lot. It's kind of rare. And it's one of my favorite candies. It's not a fan favorite, so I'll get it if you don't like it. Yeah. But butter butterfingers. I love butterfingers. Yeah. And you don't you don't get them. Like, when's the last no. time you saw a butterfinger in one of those buckets? It's been I mean, I haven't gone just trick or treating there. in a while. I want damn, I want a butterfinger so bad. Two rolls are everywhere. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, like Kremlin too. Yeah, I'm Get inundated by Tootsie them. Rolls. Where's the Butterfingers? <laughs> I'm uh, actually excited because I'm wearing a costume, so I am going to get candy tomorrow. I don't care what anyone says. I am bringing a bucket that looks like it's for it. my <laughs> small child, but it's actually for dad. And I'm going to be going through and picking the ones I want. And I'm going to try and get some Butterfingers. And you ring the time. doorbell instead of trick or treat. You just go dad tax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dad tax. Thank you. Um, <laughs> treat me. <laughs> One uh, one that's underrated, I'm going to say, and I, I, I like you, Kyle, I get it if this is not your kind of candy, because it kind of falls in that Laffy Taffy vein, uh, but Abba Zabba's. 
I loved me some Abba's Abba's growing up. The the taffy with the peanut butter inside. In the middle, yeah. That peanut butter was always just like, mm. Mm. You're a real oh, peanut butter guy. Oh, it just hits guy. different. Oh, I love peanut butter. Yeah, you're yeah. a peanut but butter But wrapped guy. in that, I don't even know what you'd call that taffy. It was like a vanilla taffy, I guess. Like some vanilla with your peanut butter was like. But if you freeze it too and it Oh, and you it oh, that's a whole, that's a game but the changer. the peanut butter stays like smooth. Yes. Oh, man. Science. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just spent more time talking about this candy than any fucking charger question. Uh, I love it. That's true. Hey, hey, what is that? It's say Halloween, baby. We candy. Everyone it loves podcast candy. That yeah. likes the chargers. Yeah, we're or a candy we podcast. Charger, podca- yeah, yeah. Okay, candy podcast. Candy po- Wonka. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> candy Willy that Wonka. talks about chargers <laughs> for at least one episode out of the year. Yeah. Um, Unless you want to have more questions about candy, yeah. If we'll you guys got more them. candy questions, <laughs> we'll we bring it opinions. to us next week. Yeah. Um, salty sports guy, thank you for asking the question. And we go out of Ask Volt Fam with Leo Boltz, who Leo. We're, we're very thankful for. He gave away a ticket or two yep. tickets. One he gave ticket? away one ticket to one uh, ticket? we did a like giveaway, and this guy named David got it and he would took his daughter to the game and sent oh, us a video sweet. and he was he was awesome. So, cool. so um I love when that happens and that's cool. And thanks to Leo for doing that because he did he could have sold that ticket, but instead he wanted to give it to a Charger fan and That's what it's all about, man. So thank you, Leo. That's fantastic. Thank you, Leo. Well, you're the last question, and you got it. It goes something like this. Hello, Charger Chat Daddies. Hmm, Can you feel that? Oh, yes. I say, can you feel that? That warm, moist feeling all through your body? That overpowering release of stress over the last two weeks exploding all out of your body, confusing your brain. Can it be pleasure or can it be pain? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's all of those. (laughs) Watching the Chargers dominate and pound the Bears into submission has once again touched my tra-la-la. Yes, my ding-ding-dong. Will (laughs) this be the last time we feel this ecstasy caressing our body on Victory Monday? Oh, nine, nine, nine. It will not. Both the f*** up, zaddies. Kill us, you bye. <laughs> ding ding dong, got yeah, ding, ding, dong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Well, no, it feels no too good. Ain't. I want more. I want more of this. Let's do it again on Monday night in prime more. time again. Yeah, next Monday could be Shh. Victory Monday night. Staley shaved too. So, oh yeah, Staley shaved. Yeah, somebody who put that <laughs> twelve that, and zero. Twelve and zero. <laughs> that stat that every, once Staley's clean shaven. I want somebody, on one of the reporters, to ask him about that because it's a light, fun question. I wonder how he. Yeah, it's a softball that. question. <laughs> Let's just see yeah. what he says. Well, yeah, we'll see if it. he's still clean shaven because that guy he's got good facial hair. If he doesn't shave every day, you'll see some shadows. So we'll yeah. see. Come press conferences here on Wednesday. Yeah, we'll know if we're gonna win on uh, Wednesday. Yeah, when I'll let you guys know. Follow up on our Friday episode. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you some bets if uh, Staley shaved or not. Yeah. I'm like, mm. oh, we'll know. We it's will know for sure, but uh, no, we're we're this ain't gonna be uh, the last time we feel that ecstasy caressing our body on victory. Ding, Monday. ding, dong, ah, tra la la, oh. ding, ding, dong. <laughs> um, love it, Leo Boltz. Thank you for asking the question, and thank you That's everybody right. for asking questions here in Ask Bolt Fam. We love it, makes us laugh. We make you laugh, so you guys get to make us laugh from time to time, and we really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Um, but that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat. Any final thoughts there, gentlemen? Happy Halloween, everybody. Have a yeah. great day. Get spooky. Ooh. Have fun. Get some Butterfingers. Get some Butterfingers and Stay some Abazabas. <laughs> if anybody gets an Abazaba, let us know, because I don't think and they do the that throw the suckers anymore. away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat, folks. Don't forget to bolt up, because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you, bye. Okay, love you, bye. And now, a word from our sponsors. Are you eating candy too fast? Find yourself gaining weight because you dad taxed your kids to death? Then have yourself a sucker. Suckers are great for all the greedy ass dads out there who just eat their kids candy with little to no remorse. What's that dad tax going towards anyway? 
better schools, improved roads? I don't think so. So stop being a greedy son of a bitch and have yourself a sucker. Suckers, they're nature's candy governor.